All right, lads, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be looking at the IS-6. This was a post-war Soviet heavy tank design, which saw very little action. However, if you've ever played War Thunder around Battle Rating 7.0, you know that there's bloody loads of these in every game you play there. In truth, the IS-6 is a very old premium in War Thunder. First introduced many years ago, when the average battle rating was around 7.0. We didn't have top tier, we didn't have annoying Chinese wheeled light tanks running around ruining everyone's day, and we certainly didn't have the KA-50. While Gaijin certainly has added a plethora of overpowered vehicles and mechanics to War Thunder, in many ways the IS-6 was the original OP vehicle, and the amount of pages written on the War Thunder forums by German mains was only rivaled by books such as the Silmarillion and War and Peace. The seething of Tiger II players was immense. The long 88 gun could basically not penetrate the IS-6, apart from the right hand side of the gun breach. As you can imagine for Gaijin, this was bad for the image of the game, but great for business. Which explains why there's so many of them still running around on the battlefield today. The truth is though that this tank is still pretty good, despite being nowhere near as good as it once was, and being fully left behind by the meta, such as stabilised guns and high power sabre rounds, the IS-6 is still a heavy slogger for the Soviet tech tree. Speaking of which, this tank sits at rank 4, at 7.3 in arcade battles, and battle rating 7.0 for realistic and simulator. To put the vehicle in your lineup, it's going to cost you 10,000 silver lines, the same as all premium vehicles, and for the expert and ace qualifications, it's 510,000 silver lines for the expert, and 1,200 golden eagles for the ace qualification. I would recommend getting these, as the reload time on the IS-6 is quite long, and you will need all the help you can get. But before we get into the video, I'd like to take a minute to talk about this video's sponsor. This video has been proudly sponsored by Joseph Stalin, the namesake of this tank. He said subscribe to Psycho Sniper's YouTube channel, or he'll send you to Kalima Goldman. Anyway lads, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Alright lads, welcome back. The IS-6 is powered by an introducing 700 horsepower. Combined with a vehicle's weight of 51.1 tons, gives the tank a power to weight ratio of 13.7 horsepower per ton. This is quite low in truth, but it is surprising just how nippy the IS-6 is. It has a pretty decent top speed of 45 km per hour, and rather strangely for a Soviet vehicle, it has a reverse speed of 18 km per hour. That's quite strange for a heavy tank, and you will take people off guard by just how fast you are. But the IS-6 is fast, but what about its protection? Well, if we take a look at this cutaway here, we can see that we have four crew members, who in true Soviet fashion are cramped in all around each other. This is bad for the survivability of the vehicle, but not as bad as all the ammunition stored between their legs and what they're sat on. An incoming round from basically the front or side of this vehicle, if it has explosive filler, is going to kill you in a single shot. There isn't really any space inside the fighting compartment for that shell to dissipate really, so all those fragments and explosive bits are just going to kill crew and basically detonate ammunition. Luckily for you however, the IS-6 armour is very thick, but more importantly, very well sloped. Starting with the lower frontal plate, and it is 120mm thick, but because of its average angling of 53 degrees from an other vehicle front on, that armour effectively is around 240mm thick, this means that the traditional weak spot of pretty much all tanks, the lower glaciers, isn't actually a weak spot on this vehicle, but rather one of its biggest strengths. The front of the IS-6 though, at least the upper frontal plate and the side glaciers, are all 100mm thick. Again, they are very well sloped. But because of the semi-pike nose of the IS-6, you really don't want to try to angle in this vehicle, at least not angle your hull, because they'll just shoot you in the weaker side plates. So always stay dead forward towards the tank really. Anyway, both of these plates are 100mm thick, giving them around 200mm of effective thickness. While 200mm is impressive, there are lots of shells which will go through that. But again, that angle ring is very important. Most APC-BC rounds are going to struggle to penetrate such well-sloped armour. They're mainly going to bounce off. And it's the same for high-explosive anti-tank fin stabilised, really. Your biggest threat in this tank is going to be the sabo slinging 
maybe the British tanks or some of the Swedish vehicles. Basically the Centurions and the other high penetration guns that you find at battle rating 7.0 and upwards. In a down tier though, your upper frontal plate and lower frontal plate are basically immune. But if we go up the tank to the turret, and it is basically 150mm thick no matter where you are. But because of volumetric armour, your true effective thickness is quite disputed. It's, it goes up and goes down in some places, as you can see here, it's 304mm thick. However, the gun mantle is the natural weak spot, just to the right of the gun as I said in the introduction. This is best demonstrated by this heat map here, or a penetration map. You can see that the only parts of the tank where you can penetrate, and this is using the Tiger II's gun at point blank range, so the 88mm APCBC round. And while you can penetrate where the lower frontal plate meets the upper frontal plate, this is very small and a volumetric shell isn't going to go through that. So your best bet if you're facing this tank is to shoot it to the right of the gun. Maybe the commander's or loader's hatches. Again, volumetric is a little bit dodgy there, so you might want to be careful. As I said, in a down tier, this thing is an absolute beast. And in an up tier, your armor isn't really that useful anymore, but you still have that decent top speed, making the i6 quite a versatile heavy tank. Something that we can't really praise that much is the gun though. It's armed with the 122mm D30T cannon. This is the same gun found on some of the early Soviet heavy tanks, mainly the IS-2. You can carry 30 rounds of ammunition at total, and you do not have a first stage ammunition rack. The tank has very bad vertical guidance characteristics, with 20 degrees of gun elevation, but only 3 degrees of gun depression. This is one of the biggest weak spots of the IS-6, you can't really use a ridgeline and put that very strong to it to work. Another of the several downsides with the main gun is the reload rate. With a stock crew we can fire the gun every 20 seconds, and with an ace crew that drops down to 15.8 seconds. So even at best you are going to get shit on really by everything apart from American heavy tanks. I believe the Tiger II can reload every 10 seconds or about that. So your reload rate and rate of fire certainly is not up there with the other bad boys of 7.0. But unlike some of the other Soviet heavy tanks like the IS-3, which get the upgraded BR-241D shell I believe, the IS-6 is stuck with the early IS-2 ammunition, mainly the BR-471 shell. This is a bog standard armor piercing high explosive round, lacking both a ballistic cap and an angled cap. This means it suffers quite a lot against angled armour, it's quite hard to penetrate angled armour with these rounds, so I'd recommend trying to shoot at the flattest armour possible at all times. We do have quite a lot of explosive filler though, with nearly 250 grams of TNT, it certainly is nothing to laugh at. If this round penetrates, 95% of the time it is going to be a one shot kill. We then also have the BR-471B shell, this is an armour piercing high explosive ballistic cap shell. So we do have the ballistic cap, which gives it slightly longer range than the 471 base variant, but we are still lacking a soft steel cap. So we still have the same problems when it comes to angled armour penetration. While your ammunition certainly isn't that good, I'd say the limiting factor of the AIS-6 is mainly its reload speed to be honest. The ammunition can work, while it lacks some of the fancy penetration aids, like the cap and other stuff. It's still more than good enough at battle rating 7.0 in my opinion. There's nothing really that heavily armoured that you'll come across with the exception of maybe the mouse or the E100. But then you're probably just better calling in your cars and bombing them anyway. But the main weak spot of the I-6 is definitely that reload rate. There are lots of tanks at 7.0 and upwards which have the same penetration as you. But they have much higher fire rates such as like the Centurion and the Tiger IIs. When it comes to the question of whether you should buy the IS-6, I'd say it is still certainly a very potent grinder in War Thunder. It's still a lot of fun, you still bounce a lots of shots, it is still annoying to kill, especially from the front, but you still bounce quite a lot of shots coming in from the side. People still shoot you in the upper side armour, instead of shooting you below the tracks. Another top tip. But this tank is very survivable, it's just a good all round beginner's tank in my opinion. It's not a good tank to learn how to play heavy tanks because it plays more like a very heavily armoured medium if that makes sense. But I'd say that this tank is fun, I enjoy playing it a lot. The 7.0 Soviet lineup is very good, you can even up to it to 7.3 and still have a very very good lineup. So there isn't really any other reason not to get this tank other than that you actually have to pay money to Gaijin for it. That's my only real criticism which is a little unfair I do admit. But yeah lads, it's a great tank, I enjoy playing it. Arguably very overpowered in the down tier, but it just proves the saying that you don't have to play top tier to have fun in War Thunder. 
the mid tiers are still good for laughs and good gameplay as much as War Thunder has good gameplay anymore. But anyway, lads, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you do come back for more. If you did like it, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. It does really help me out in YouTube's algorithm. Don't forget what Giuseppe Stalin said and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to leave a comment down below to tell me what vehicle you guys like to see me review next. As always, a big thank you to everyone that watches these videos, especially my YouTube members. And as always, I'll see you in the next review.